everybody Mike here so in this video I'm going to show you how we pour and finish 42 by 28 garage now this garage also had a little L off the back right there that was about 14 by 14 so what we do normally is obviously I you know we came the day before and we got this all prepped we put the poly down the wire down we shot our grades and that's how I figure my concrete this came to about 24 and a half yards so we'll have three trucks here so we'll dump this first eight, eight and a quarter yards out and, you know, get that truck right out of there and then we'll get this leveled off. So the first thing we do is, you know, in order to reach that back piece there, we had to hook on our 16 foot chute. And that comes in real handy. That way we don't have to get a pump, you know, we don't have to get the conveyor in there. We just hook the chute on and get the concrete right where we need it. You can see down there on the left, I got another smaller chute, but that's about an eight footer. And that just helps us get the concrete a little closer to where we need it without having to pull too much right from the, sh the truck chute. Now for tools on a job like this, you know, you don't need a lot of tools to get a get a concrete floor poured. So we're basically using our concrete rakes. We've got a screed we're going to use, about a 13 foot screed. And we got a bull float. And then we got those chutes. And then just for hand tools, you can see in my back pocket there, we got a mag float. Those are the basic tools you need to pour a concrete floor like this. Doesn't take a lot, um, but it does get the job done just perfectly fine. So we're getting down towards the end of this first truck here. We'll get him all dumped out. You can see Darren's over there, Mag floating some edges. And now we're going to start screeding it. If you guys like these kind of videos, you know, please go down there and smash that like button. I'd appreciate it. That helps me out with the YouTube algorithm and share it and subscribe i mean if you if you like concrete type videos that's what i do twice a week so if you if you're not a subscriber going down there and hit subscribe now i appreciate that too you can see the guys are kick screeding and that's how we're going to screed this garage floor because it has quite a slope to it from the back to the front you know it slopes about two and a half inches so whenever we have a garage floor that has quite a bit of slope in it we like to just kick screed it and not viber screed it and the reason for that is we know that because we've screeded by hand so long we know that it's going to be a perfect plane when we get done screeding it with a by hand like this and there's just a lot less room for error as far as we're concerned that doesn't mean you can't screed it with a viber screed you can you just got to be really perfect and you don't get any dips and humps in the floor so i'm shooting my pad I, that the laser I'm using, I'm using a self-leveling laser. It's it's the Topcon RL H5B. All this stuff that we use, guys, will be down in the description in the video if you want to check them out. And that's how we shoot our grades in the middle of these floors. We just make a wet pad like that, and I put an X on it when I know it's right right to grade, and then we'll strike our pads to screed off from and then we'll just wet screed it like this and you can see me and Darren with this is what we call kick screeding so we just two of us can grab onto that long screed and, and screed a whole bay you know and just really a matter of seconds you know so it doesn't take us that long especially with a good puddler there like Luke you can see how he's pushing all that concrete up to make sure that we don't have to stop until we get done or we run out one or the other that's basically you know for us that's a pretty easy way to screed Learn, now learning how to kick screed that's a little bit different that takes that's a little bit of a learning curve but it doesn't take too long you know if you're screeding with someone like us you could learn that in, a, in about a week pretty easily doing floors like this this is a pretty typical day for us you know we'll come in we'll, we'll pour and we'll finish concrete floor sometimes we'll do two of them in a day Depending on what else we got going if not then you know I'll leave either Luke and Darren here to finish or just one of those guys and, and and me and somebody else will go get another job ready for the next day or even two or three days in advance so but we're usually pouring concrete most every day whether it's a garage a house a patio you know stamp concrete or something you can see me there making another wet pad so we have that my receiver there on my grade stick is set right to the middle grade of that floor 
And now I'm just checking the level of the concrete using the, the, le the laser level in the receiver. And then I just adjust the concrete up or down depending on what the grade stick tells me. And that's perfect right there. So we'll use that to go by now and we'll strike this pad and then that gives us something to screed off from so we don't have to use screed rails, we don't have to use a, a 2x4 guide or nothing, we'll just use that wet pad. And this is the way we were taught, you know, this, 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 this is easy for us, this is the way we were taught, so this is the way we do it. There's, there's all kinds of ways to do it. This is how we do it. You can see how we're screeding that down and kick creeding. Both of us are right in sync. It, it Just for us, it makes screeding the floor real easy. What's the best way, the easiest way you guys found to screed floors? You know, let me know down there in the comments. Do any of you guys kick screed like we do? You know, let, let me know that. If not, do you just pull it back two or three times, stop? then set back or do you just vibra screed everything because you've never really learned how to how to kick screed like this you can see on bull float net now the bull float pushes down the rocks brings up some of the cement paste makes the surface pretty smooth and just you know gets it ready in advance for a power trial on it we will be power trial on this too so stay tuned that's coming up at the end of the video I'll show you we got a new power trial we're using, an MBW power trial. I'll show you how we use that. And just what the floor looks like after you power trial it. So we're finishing up right here in this last garage door. This was a three bay garage. Luke's going to get that last piece bowl floated. And then I'm going to show you kind of how we taper the garage doors. We set those, those two by four forms right there about a half inch lower than the the height of the floor so we're going to taper the the doorway down to the top of that 2x4 you can see we taper that back in about you know 8 to 10 inches that way when the door garage door shuts any rain that hits the garage door and runs down the outside of the door will hit that taper and it won't go back into the garage it'll always run outside alright so here's loop with the, the brand new MBW power trial. MBW is a American made company there in Wisconsin. They make these power trials. This is a 36 inch trial. It's got a five and a half Honda motor on it. It's their high RPM low vibe handle power trial. It's, my guys love this thing. This is the third or fourth floor. We finished with it now and they can't, they, they can't stop telling me how much they really love this power trial. So I would, you know, if you're in the market for a power trial, if you're looking for one, I'd highly recommend checking these guys out. Um, I'll have a link for it in the description down below too if you want to check out the cost of these and see what they cost. They're, they're relatively, you know, inexpensively compared to some other power trials I've used. So they're definitely worth their weight in gold I mean you can't finish concrete floors really really nice without a power trial of some kind so I've used them all you know I've used the Whitemans I've used Bartels I've used Stones um, and I've used Master power trials this one here is definitely you know right at the top of the list as far as quality and how smooth they run you can see Luke's in there he's He's finishing this thing off. We always go, use a pattern when we power trial floors. So we'll go, you know, east to west one time when we hit it. And then the next time we, we go in there and it's ready, we'll go north to south and cross that pattern. That just helps keep the floor nice and level. Make sure you don't have any dips or humps in the floor. You can see how he's going back and forth. The floor gets smoother and smoother each time you hit it. If you let it dry a little bit in between hits, you know you gotta. You can't just keep going over it and over it and over it without stopping. You gotta you gotta power trial it, stop for a little while, let the concrete set up a little bit, then hit it again. But the timing of it is the key. I've got other videos on the timing. You can go back and check them out. But that's basically you know a day for us how we pour and finish a, a garage floor and 
I'll have a couple other videos pop up right here at the end that you could go check out to see a little more information on pouring concrete floors and power troweling concrete floors. So go ahead and click on them. Again, like, share, and subscribe if you, if you like these videos and, and let me know if there's any other type of videos you want me to make, guys. Thanks for watching.